Good morning, virtual convention. We are excited for our next workshop because it is on a very, very important subject. Now, you might be wondering why my hair looks so gorgeous. And it is because I have just visited the Clip and Curl. We have Clip and Curls in Denver, but they also have them at the Grovian Doll Museum. And one thing that is very important to remember about our hair, it is the only crown that we never take off. And always remember that good hair is the best revenge. <laughs> I'm true. here with Michael Canadas. Hi, hi everybody. Good morning. How are you? We are good. So one thing you might not know about Michael Canadas is that he went to beauty school. That's right. And he knows all about the importance of That's good right. hair. Look at this. I mean, this is one of my creations. <laughs> it's kind of like Sophia Loren, you know, or, or uh, Gina Lola Brigida. I mean, it's a total new look for you, Rachel. It's a new look. And I, like I told you this morning, I have not felt this gorgeous in hours. <laughs> <laughs> well, what is our motto? Our motto is, um, there's no such thing as a bad hair day at the Grovian. No, but what's the other motto at the Clip and Curl? Oh, our other motto at the Clip and Curl is, honey, if your hair ain't becoming to you, you then be you better to become to us. us. Yeah. <laughs> and so if your dolls need a little Clip and Curl That's styling, that. we got you, babe. Yeah. We are here with Linda Wall. And there's Wall. nothing worse than dolls with bad hair. No. It, it, and there's no excuse for it. It doesn't matter if she's uh, 300 years old or, uh, you know, last week's latest, you know, uh, BJD. They really should all have good hair. I totally agree. Like yours, agree. Rachel. Like my hair. That's right. It's just beautiful. Yeah. So we are here with our Doll Artist and Guild instructor, Linda Wall, and she has created a clip and curl. Yeah. Good morning, Linda. Good morning. Good morning. So we are so excited about the clip and curl because for one, this is something that everybody can do and should do. They should. And we need to start. Now, wait, I want to say something about that. Not everybody can do it. Okay. They, I mean, you kind of technically, yes, but really not everyone can do it. So what I suggest is if you have friends that are, have the gift like I do and Rachel does you have them watch this video and let them do it for you and then you do something for them that's within your talent but I know Linda's going to give you some techniques and so there's no reason I think collectors need to start sharing their talent hey you're good at a computer and graphic arts you do that you're good at hair because not everybody can do hair. I, I, okay, I'd have to agree with that, but yeah. we can all agree that my hair looks That's, absolutely gorgeous. It, there's no question. No about question that. about yeah. that. Yeah. I mean, tonight we may do something different, but not every, honestly, who else could do this except me? <laughs> so Michael got up, Michael got up very well, early. You. I'll never be able to compete. <laughs> Okay, what we're going to do is um, we're going to talk about some basics and then I'm going to give you resources where to go to get more detail because there's not enough time to do it. But I'm going to start with, um, we have different kinds. Here's an old wig and a lot of people would say, oh, just I can't do anything with it. Well, if you take time, you can. But what I hate to see is people that just go in and just start ruining our beautiful antique wigs. You can pick these up, but a lot of people don't want to take the time. This is something you can do on the porch with your husband or something. But you've got to take the time to, just like when you have a child that has matted hair, you will detangle it. You would not take a brush and start combing or a comb and start ripping the mm -hmm. hair out but if you do take some of the hair out please save it because if we have bald spots we can go in and stitch the hair back into the bald spot and there's nothing like 
bad hair. Then you also find wigs like this. Notice I'm handling it fairly delicately. Okay, this one we could probably go ahead and use on a doll because it's not terribly in need of repair. But if it does need repair, there's two ways to do it. This one, I would probably just go ahead and reinforce it or mend it. And you can use a muslin, just put it in here. And I would stitch it, but be careful how your stitches go through, that they only go through the wig cap, not holding down your hair. Here again, this needs to be combed out, and this is not really bad. You can probably, this is also clean. Let's go back to, if you get a wig somewhere, and doll shows there are wigs out there you can purchase, but they're usually matted, they're mm -hmm. dirty, they're icky. How do I tell if it's dirty? You can tell because it's just like your hair when it gets filthy. How do I clean it? First of all, you make sure you have a head that's the same size as the wig that you want. So I just brought this baby out because I have it here. And I am afraid, I really don't like styling my wigs on my dolls because they can fall. But if I have to do it, then I usually put them on a large metal stand and the waistband part would be around their neck. Mm -hmm. And then I rubber band it on so that it might not fall over. But I also have a towel. You always have to have your pate. And I am going to, the masking tape is not wanting to work today. So we will use painter's tape. But usually I use masking tape. We never glue these on like some people do because we want to see our dolls. I see a lot of you have just hopped on. We are here live at our workshop called the Visiting the Clip and Curl Hairstyling Techniques for Your Doll Wigs. And as you can see, I just visited the Clip and Curl and I am just feeling gorgeous. Okay, then to protect your doll's face, what we would do is this is just plain old saran wrap always important to protect, protect the doll. doll's face always the rubber always. band just broke okay here's one then i also protect the body i never sit so Linda, you are you are going to style on the doll, but you said you normally do not okay. recommend this. I don't. I really get very nervous. So how do you? What do you usually use? Okay. Well, I use what's available, as you can see in the background. I use a roll of paper towels, and I can. So, if I would wash this wig that would fit this doll. And then let's say this one. And after I dematted it and, and brushed it out, I could go ahead and I use just regular shampoo that I use on my own hair and conditioner. Make sure you condition it. I personally do not like to let it blow dry it because it does damage to the hair. But I like to make sure that it dries on the doll's head. This is why I would do this, because then if it shrinks, and it will, it shrinks on the head, and then you do not have an issue having to re-wet it. And see, this fits. So it's important for it to dry on the head because it will shrink, but then it won't shrink too much that it won't fit. Then you could go ahead, and we are going to talk about styling. But this is how I would do clean my wigs. Okay, we'll take this out of the way. There is, see, you get a wig like this. It needs, it could be just glued onto the pate, but if you wanted to make a wig cap, 
how you would do that. I'm sorry, I took the doll away. You can make a wig cap, or if you needed to repair a wig, you can make it the same way. You can use muslin, or you can use, it's called Wet and Shape, and you can buy it from Gilda's Fabrics. She still has some available. How you would know how to do this is you would measure from ear to ear, add a, it's seven, so add an inch, that's eight, let's see, and probably nine, so let's make it nine inches. So you would make a nine inch square, and I'm gonna just pretend like I cut it. Okay. I'm sorry. So those that are just tuning in, Linda is showing us how to make a wig cap. And you can buy this fabric at a place called Gildas Fabrics. What is that material that you're that, spraying yes. on? And I'm just spraying water. Water. And I'm making this very wet. It will become very sticky. Now, if you can't buy this, you can use wet and shape, um, all the kind of starchy kind of fabrics that you can buy at a hobby store. Now, I've, what you're gonna do is you're gonna put this on the doll's head where you would want the wig cap. And this rubber band, I hit nails. Okay. Now, you want to make sure all of the wrinkles are not towards in the front. Like so. You can tell it's really sticky. You're going to turn it up and you're going to let it dry. At this point, you could use a blow dryer. Then what you're going to do is you will have this little line. This will give you an idea. I would stitch around it. I would also stitch. Mm -hmm. See this pleat? I would stitch this pleat down. Okay. I would take it on the machine and use a zigzag if you have it, or just do it by hand. You're going to stitch around the outside edge, and then guess what? You can place that and glue your wig. So this is how you can replace a wig cap, everybody, if your wig cap is frail or brittle. Correct. And then it will fit on the doll's head. The only thing else you could do with that would be glue it to the pate. You can use this over again, like I did a demonstration at UFDC, and this is, I, can, I could have reused this. Now there's many, you can also, if you wanna learn how to make a wig, you can go and download instructions on the Doll Artisan Guild. They have a lot of different ways to make modern wigs. If you have bits and pieces, you can learn how to weft. This is a wefted. I prefer, if I'm working with hair, to use mohair. It's a natural fiber, and this is what they consider wefted mohair. And this is roving. The first thing you need to know about wefting, when you have it, hold it. And this is where they have folded it over and stitched it. And you can see there's little tidbits. And if you don't pull these tidbits out, it makes bumps in your wig. And you notice I'm holding on and pulling this. Yes, it shortens it, but it makes it so much nicer. For more detail, like I said, go down and download the um, document. It's very minimal charge and it goes into full detail. Or take a class, but it's like this. When you do roving, you can, this is what most people use for smaller dolls. Be aware that you cannot rip it this way. It's like a rope. You hold your hands out and you pull. Mm -hmm. You never clip these blunt because they'll always be blunt. There's nothing you can do. This is the two different types of mohair. Now, let's go 
to styling. Styling. Styling can be really fun too. So, and we have some uh, interesting ways to do this. Uh, some with some tools that you have at home for sure. All right, we're here with doll artist and guild instructor, Linda Wall. Okay, be sure when you stitch, you use the same color, just in case you see your stitching. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's many different ways to style. Depending on the size of doll, again, proportion, you can use your straws. If I had a smaller wig, I could have used straws instead of this perm. I might have to go over there. And, and, but you can make your own length of straws. How would I? I can use a little teeny doll. You can use the cocktail straws. So these are, the straws are serving as your curlers. Yes. And instead of using the hair paper. Is that water? This is just plain water. I never like to use all of the other things like, I've heard vinegar, I've used sugar heard sugar water. Why would you use sugar water? It only attracts bugs. Yeah, you should not, not put sugar in your in, in your hair. No. But people, I, I heard a, a lot of things. Okay, just like, you want to get this down. So the straw is a little small, but you're using it just to show a demonstration. I am. Just doing a demonstration. And the beauty of it is you have what you need to fix it. So it doesn't require a lot. There you go. And that's just a pin. That's just a straight pin. And this is how you would do that one. Now there's perm rods. Now, when I work at home, I prefer the perm rods. Mm -hmm. And the reason I prefer them because the curls stay in longer. And if I'm doing a doll's hair, I want it to stay. So how you use the perm rods, here again, you need different sizes. Okay, so let's take a look at the perm rods for everybody. There's all different sizes. And I will say that the Dolls Parts has a kit that all different sizes of this. It comes with the brushes and what I also use. But before you style, you, you de-knot it, you also can we brush it. Remember to always, and when I brush, I'm going to show you. I start and I hold so, so that you don't pull too much out. Mm -hmm. And then I go on up. Yes, you will get hair out, but you will save it. Mm -hmm. I will. And you're saving it for bald spots. Bald spots, fillers. Here again, you spritz it. You have to use the old fashioned papers. Okay, so she is using old fashioned papers and did you get those at Sally Beauty Supply? You can get them at Sally's Beauty Supply or they're in the kit too. There's papers and everything that you need. So if you're one of these that you know just doesn't like to go out and shop, just order You've the got, kit? Yes, you have. Most of the people, and I'm going to use this, well, I'm going to use the bigger size. Oh my God, it's 1968. At it's least. It's come back. Maybe 1948. <laughs> <laughs> These are rollers that I uh, inherited from my mother. <laughs> oh yeah, oh sure. Yeah, but they're still very useful. Do you ever do rag curls? Yes, you can do rag curls. And if you can remember how to do that. Can I tell you how to do it? Please do. A special technique. So my whole life, my mother wore her hair from the time I was born until I think like 1979, exactly like Audrey Hepburn wore in Breakfast at Tiffany's. Hmm. Except my mother had much better hair than um, Audrey Hepburn. Now, I did not inherit that, unfortunately, but she had incredible hair. It was down to her knees. So she'd have this incredible hairdo, 
And then to make it for her own, she had a ponytail that came out of the back of the bun. So what she did, and I've done this many times, is she would take, once a week she washed her hair, because that's what they did in those days, and she had dry hair. I couldn't do that, I couldn't go a day without washing my hair, but hers was dry. So she, once a week, she did her hair, and she would take the hair that was gonna be in the ponytail, and she'd pull it like this, and then she would, do you have something to wrap with? Do you wanna rip this? Yeah, just give me a little strip. This big? Yeah, that'll do it. So she would wrap it like this and this and this and just wrap it until it was tiny. But what she used was the pantyhose. Pantyhose. And it, and it became very small and then it came out this perfect corkscrew rag curl like you'd see in Victorian dolls. So I have used that for years. And once you, get, once you get it set, it's never coming out. I mean, it would, well, those are very loose, but I do have um, uh, some other dolls that have the very long curls. But in order to get it, the hair has to be long in the first place. Mm -hmm. If the hair is that short, you're not, not getting gonna, anything. Very long. Yeah, but it, wor it works. What about and, extensions? On you could put extensions in a wig, sure. Mm -hmm. Repairing a wig. We do that all the time. Mm -hmm. We just had a, a beautiful 18th century doll that was beautiful in every way, except she had some major bald issues. So I have my stash, which I'm sure you do, and you do, of old hair. And I just gave her some implants or mm -hmm. extensions. And I think it just, it, 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 I'm not saying that you, you want to fake anyone out. But what you want to do is you don't want to be the focus on a gorgeous doll is, oh, she's, you know, she's oh. missing hair. Mm -hmm. Everything's nice. When we have the hair that we can do it. That's why, why you not? save it. Yes. And that's why they had hair receivers. Right. And my mother didn't have to do the things that other people did, which was save the hair to build it up and those, you know, bouffants mm -hmm. that they wore in the 60s. But they did do that. They take the things off the, the brushes and uh, maybe we could go later on in the day and I can show you, Rachel, some doll wigs that have original wigs that have padding in it. Mm -hmm. So they would put the padding in and then do the hair over. Mm. Do they do the rat over the top of the padding? You know, like No, the I hair. mean, what I mean is they would just take balls of it and that would be a rat. Okay. And it's like a pad. And, and sometimes they used cotton too. They take cotton and then they wrap it and wrap it. But um, my mother didn't have to do it, it was all. And then when she finally changed her look, when she went for the Linda, Ed, uh, Linda Evans look, remember Dynasty? It was like a total departure. She had for like two weeks a headache. Because after all those years of having, you know, a big hairdo and bobby pins and all that, so, so it, it took her a while to, to get It took her a while. I, hey, I beauty is pain. Here, it, beauty is pain. But it's so but worth it. This brings back so many memories of what you're doing. Okay. Before, I'm not the hairstylist of all time. Oh, you're, you're, you do good work. Okay. But if this is, a lot of times you get like a stray, well, you cannot style. So I use, I go in and I cheat. This is called a thinning chair because a lot of people use littler scissors and they go like this. Just like your beautician likes mm -hmm. to whack away at your hair and then you start panicking when they're starting to even out each side. <laughs> but you want to make this even before you try to curl it because if you don't, you're going to have these little corkscrews at the end. Now, what I did is we could use straws you could use what Dave michael said I wrap this but it just gives it enough of, enough a, poof. of a bend mm -hmm. and then you could go in with a comb any kind of comb and you can back comb it and it gives it a little softness around and the you, face don't you believe though linda too you can't just set the doll wig and then plop it on the head no. you've got to then zhuzh it Oh. On the head, mm -hmm. you're just and like a real person. That's what I do when I, I cover the doll. Because if you don't cover the doll, you usually have the clothes on. I do. Because then 
the clothes dictate how the wig has to be. So I want to see if it's matching. And so I always put the plastic bag because it's handy and mm -hmm. I can throw it away and it's, it's fine or I reuse it. Now I styled these. I have no idea, but here it is. Gorgeous. Oh, they look beautiful. That's a beautiful curl. That's mm -hmm. a beautiful curl. It's uh -huh. gonna stay. If you want it softer, usually what we do mm -hmm. and make it softer. Darling. It makes it so much softer. Mm -hmm. I personally at this time, then you have to decide whether you're gonna pull it back, if she's gonna have a bonnet or a hat. This will have to change, but at that point... And I want to point out what Linda's doing, too, is here. Look at the curls are going in the, the, the same direction. And then in the center back, now they're going the other direction. Correct. So that's what, that's what makes it. If you, if you do it... You right. Know, I mean, if you want Rachel's look, oh. then you do the random, random look. look. <laughs> yeah. Are you going well, sometimes I don't like to have all my curls going the same direction. That's right. So I like to... <laughs> I like to mix it up a bit, That's right. but for your purposes, historically, historically accurate, accurate mm -hmm. go ahead and do this. Now, there's another way if you're in a hurry, and I will say, I was really, I really like this curling iron. There's a lot of reasons because the tip, I tend to burn my fingers a lot when we're curling. And this one, has a ceramic barrel versus the brass ones. It has two settings. Now, if you are not used to curling hair, I would strongly recommend you use setting one because you can. Oh, beauty you, is pain. You I, get burned. I know, but you my know. fingers hurt after yeah, the well, day of curling. Well, that's <laughs> but, the price you have to pay to be gorgeous. Okay, there's many ways if you want to curl. Like if it's your own hair, and I used to try to do it this way. Of course, you would have to do it. And okay, usually you don't have the desk to worry about, but you would like this. And I tend to count like thirty seconds. Well, because I I touched that barrel, and it's not that hot. No, it's not. At work, I usually use a number two. You, you are so gentle. I, I don't. I don't take it off till I start smelling smoke. I know, but then you have to take the scorch off the barrel of the. Oh, we can handle it. Okay, let's see if I can get this. Another little technique. Are, are you Are you familiar with the spiral curler? Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a rip. That's a good little tool. Okay, now I'm, I'm pulling it a little tighter. And I just knocked it up to two. But see, then I can at least hold on to here. You can also wear a glove, but that the heat, since this is human hair, I I have to have mine pretty darn hot to curl mine. You hair. do, and I'm trying to I just turned it up to two. The other reason I like this is I hate those things that clip down that so it doesn't burn the table. Start a fire. Okay, let's see if I can get that hair hairdo's on fire. It's yeah, looking a little. Yet. It's a little limp, but I need to. It keep... depends on the look you want. Yes, but if you get a little tidbit down here that needs to be curled, you can go ahead and just do this. Or on my hair, my new hairstyle, I I straighten the end, and it looks like a crazy person. It's my new uh, my new wild wild ride look now, but for doll purposes you want a nice real. cascading beautiful classic curl yes and, and then on the bangs here again if you didn't want to do the curls you could go like this just grab a piece of hair hold it the beauty of this is that i'm not burning my hand and I think that's what I really enjoyed, not having blisters on my fingers. Michael says, beauty is pain. pain. Beauty is pain, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Those uh, bangs do look great. Yes, you want them soft. You want your yeah. doll to be, and you want to decide, okay, if you wanted to pull this back, there's many ways to do it. You can use hairpins. And there's little teeny hairpins that you can use. You've really achieved in the bangs. 
in my opinion, very much a, a Kessner look mm -hmm. that you'll see on Kessner, Kessner dolls. And you can do the same thing on like the little Kessner I have over there on the bottom. It's just turned under. You can do that and then she can have a beautiful bonnet. You don't want to put a lot of work on your hair if all you're going to see is here. I mean, I'd also like to suggest to, to the to collectors out there that say you have a collection with a lot of dolls that need to have their hair done. Um, one thing you don't want to do is have all your dolls look like they went to the same clip and curl on the same day. So, I mean, I think it's important to have them look different. Mm -hmm. Have them have different styles. You know, braids and mm -hmm. curls and bobs and... So, Linda, you used a curling iron, and this is a human hair wig, but then would you use that same curling iron on a mohair wig? Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. I, mean, I think you would actually get a better. better. You would get a lot better curl in a, uh, with a mohair. mohair what about other fibers? I don't really. I wouldn't use curling iron. Mm -hmm. um, it's important for them to know because you could have a disaster. Yes. You and, could have and, a disaster. And I don't think that, I mean, this, that you're, you're talking about, Mohair and, and human, human hair. hair. That's where it ends in this that's a different story. That's a it's, different. That's a different. That's a different uh, convention. Definitely. After that convention. That's definitely. A totally different. It's a totally convention. different convention. That was one of the questions of our attendees. Yes. Is is and what to if do? If you wanted to do braids, I find it's a lot easier to curl my hair, and then it just seems to stay together. Okay. Well, if I wanted to go ahead and. Do loose braids in like a lot of fashions it's really nice oh that's pretty see it's easier and then it pulls up mm -hmm. another like trick that, that i've learned is that it's easier to take the same colored thread and stitch this into the wig cap then it stays i'm not worried about it coming undone and when it's shipped that it's it's not well, styled. I, I think that a lot of uh, wigs are really damaged as far as the settings by falling off the dolls. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, um, our own dolls, I'm not talking about our dolls that are for sale, our own dolls, if I've made the decision to keep them, I lightly glue the wigs down because I don't want, if I'm sharing them with uh, the Grovian, with the, uh, 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 our doll club or, or whatever, and I'm moving them, and every two minutes the wig falls off, that's really causes damage mm -hmm. and messes the hair up. So I lightly glue it down. I don't, you know, if I think I'm gonna have this doll until they haul me out feet first, then it's not gonna be my problem if there's a little glue on the head to, mm -hmm. to someone can get it, but it does, it really does mess them up. Mm -hmm. Another thing is if you do glue, he said lightly glue. Lightly. Like that's the word, don't use airplane glue. I've had to soak off grip glue in a wig, and it's very hard. And if you've ever seen a wig pull on a, a doll, it's it's pathetic mm -hmm. because people have just ripped the head. How do you get a wig off of the doll that you're trying to you're trying to change? You would take a damp washcloth or a paper towel and literally just soak it, and then work it. Soak it and keep working gently. gently. You don't, yeah. and it, it's just, it might take you a half a day to it's, just keep yeah, going back be. and back and back. And if, and if you don't, if you're not willing to give it that time, then give it to somebody it. that get, does. Yeah. yeah. But here again, I like using the paper towels because number one, it won't break. It's easy for me to adjust the size I go like this, but I never put it on the paper towel. I always put it on the doll that it's gonna shrink to. One of our attendees uh, wants to know, how do you cut a human wig shorter with a natural look? Do you use thinning shears? I do, because it's easier for me. Because I'm not a beautician like Michael. <laughs> for me, and, and I will give my beautician well, student I should, I should, burn. I should tell you that I am a beauty school dropout, <laughs> so I didn't quite finish the exam. So okay. I did enough that it works for me, yeah, but, but yeah, no, I didn't mean to, to intimidate you. No, it's, I mean, I know that this style is 
It's wonderful. It's just fabulous. No. But I know when I go to <laughs> Michael search. did my hair this morning before our workshop, and um, I just, I can't wait to go to the banquet with my I know. gorgeous, gorgeous hairstyle. Maybe style. he'll change your bow, though. Yeah. yeah, maybe I could get something yeah. a little bit more formal. Yeah. And maybe some better clips. Maybe mm -hmm. some better. Well, they want to know, um, where did you purchase these clips? They're so great. I got those at Home Depot. At Home Depot. <laughs> Are there any other questions? Any other questions? Let me now, scroll through and did see. Did you talk about cleaning wigs? Yes. Okay. What do you use to clean wigs? We use regular shampoo and conditioner. You can also use, if you're in a hurry, and I really don't know, is glass cleaner. And you can spritz it on and then take paper towels and then blot it and get a lot of the filth and the dust off. And then go okay, ahead and Okay, I'm going to give you something new. Good. Okay, so, you know, we live in an artist community. It's been here for, for 100, 100 plus years. So we have a lot of artists. And what do they use? They use paintbrushes. And the good ones use sable paintbrushes. So one day it dawned on me, hmm, they clean their paintbrushes with lacquer thinner. That's how they clean the paintbrushes. Uh, sable fur is not much different, actually, than human hair. And a lot of people, uh, human hair, mohair, a lot of people don't realize that actually this is synthetic. But this, if we put this under a microscope and we looked at the hair, it would almost be like scales, like fish scales. And that's why if you're making wigs, you want the scales to run all the same direction. If you have it half and half, you're going to end up with back comb, frizzy. That's how you can get the frizzy. It's because the scales are running in all different directions. So it dawned on me, I thought, you know, I'm going to just experiment. So I went and got some lacquer thinner, which is what you clean brushes with. Glass jars. I put a wig in it. Mohair wig. Totally took out all the dirt, all the dust, all the debris and take, took the wig out, two or three days, all the lacquer thinner evaporated. And you don't, if you have a, a dirty wig that has a perfect set, you can put it in there, it doesn't do, it doesn't affect the set at all. Does it? No, it doesn't. And it, it's, it's, a, it's a clean way to, and you might have to do it a few times and move it from, you know, now, if you're not good with explosives and things like that, don't put it near your stove. Don't try it if you don't know what you're doing, but it works and, and it works with human hair. It works in a set thing. And the, what, what was really great is it doesn't shrink the cap. Good. So you can put the cap in it. It's not like you're drying it, water, you know, that kind of thing. So try that too. If, you, if someone's experiment though, Work on a bad wig and just try it. Now, if, you're, if your hair has changed color or anything like that, it's, the, the lack of thinner is not gonna help it. It's gonna remove dirt, grime, insects. I mean, nothing will be alive in your wig when you're done with it. Do you have to change the lacquer thinner? I mean, like if you put it in a jar and it becomes filthy, yeah, you can. Yeah, you can do I just it do. I just do it because I'm a clean freak. So I've done it three or four times. This is live. Yes. And that's probably an attendee calling to to confirm to, to confirm. Yeah. So Michael, uh, uh, our friend Marta said that Michael, you've always said if I told you my wig secrets, I'd have to kill you. So do we have to? Should we start running now? <laughs> because. No, I mean, that's that's a thing that we it's a great see. secret it's yeah, a, great, it's a great, great secret thank you for uh, that thank you um and and but <laughs> oh yeah the check the checks the checks the checks here so okay. this is great though linda you've given us a there's a little wig that has here's some... a little wig and i what i did is you can see it has a little bald spot and what i was doing is here's some little snippets and what I'm going to do is probably just take a little teeny bit of glue or I'm going to stitch it right there down the hairline mm -hmm. 
and that gives it some fullness. And then I would be able to curl this, and then I could put a bonnet on her or something. And the thing about that is, too, here's the little wigs. Those are the ones that really, they're hard to get. They're harder to find, they for are. sure. If you want an antique little wig. Mm -hmm. So, I mean. See, here's one. But notice that when we put the bows in, we always stitch them in. That way they're in. Mm -hmm. And this is one that, that, too, like, look at that. It's got nice curls in it. If you had to clean it, it just drop it in lacquer thinner, and um, and then it's it's not a bad idea to put a um, some spray on it to give it some um, shine afterwards. What kind of spray? I just use whatever. I'm not. I mean, I had one time up. I was at a show, and I. Being a beauty school dropout, I had another collector who was a beautician that came and I was working on a brew and I was pulling her, I had her all in curls and I was taking the, kind of like what Rachel's has today, uh, in curls <laughs> and I was taking the curl out and they started lecturing me on, you know, what I should do and what I shouldn't do. And I said, I'm going to do what I want. And it's like, the hair is dead. It is no longer attached to the scalp. It It is... Hair, mohair, and human hair is so much tougher than people think. Sure, the part that's attached to it may not be tough. Mm -hmm. The actual fiber itself is is tough. I mean, they have they pull out five thousand year old mummies with hair, mm -hmm. so the hair survives. So it's a lot tougher than you think. And then when you give it, say, a nice spray, if you want to go and buy the expensive stuff, actually it works as a protective barrier from dust and whatnot. Do you, what we do is we would take a sack or something, mm -hmm. protect your face though, so you don't have spray on your, on yeah. your best. Yeah, because if someone was going to black light a doll, they would have and, specs. And they, and they would, they would, um, if they got residue of, of spray, then it's going to show up as like, like this disaster. But you're much more efficient than I am. I just hold my hand against it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, we want to give everybody, of course, take take the tips that you want and figure out how to make your own clip and curl rules. Just before and, you go on. Yes, to... there is one thing I would like to say. I've learned this from David from a doll I purchased. What I really love, the fact is, beyond the pate, they do is on the masking tape, wherever it is, they take masking tape and they double it over. Let's see if I can get this. And it would be, you would put this on the paint. That way the doll's head wig doesn't go flopping around. Yeah. And it's it lasts uh, several times when you yeah. even remove the wig because on the Kestner that's I will remove her wig many times. And you can always replace it. So that was another tidbit. I like it better than a lot of people use iWax. Oh, no, don't do that. This gets so gooey. This is, it does. This is I mean this is so the iWax is so overdone in um uh, oh yeah, they're calling again. <laughs> They're, they're calling for their appointment at the Clip and Curl. <laughs> so, well, uh, Linda, I know there's a kit on Dolls Parts for the uh, for the wonderful... There is. A, there's a kit for, with all of the, the um, thinning shears, the comb. Okay. You get rollers, all different sizes of rollers. You get bobby pins, hair pins. Um, here. So it's a good That's, deal. It is a good deal. If you want to purchase the curling iron, it's on special. If you When you order, you put virtual doll convention on. They okay. will give you, basically, you're getting this at a discount for ten, you know, almost $10. So when you purchase both the kit and the curling iron, if you don't want to purchase the kit, you can buy the curling iron mm -hmm. at a higher price. Go in there. If you want to learn how to make wigs, go on the dollartisingill.org, download their many different oh, okay. Um, okay, the, the things that are on there okay. to learn. Okay. And there's lots of resources. Go out there and start searching mm -hmm. for them. Yeah. 
Okay. Go out there and start searching, watch and rewatch our video. We have, uh, thank you, Linda and Michael's over there working, but we, that was a fun workshop um, uh, at the Clip and Curl. And so we are going to now get ready for our next workshop with Linda, which is going to be making the pinafore and the underwear. Here are the little dolls right here that we're going to be working on. And then in between that, we're, we are also going to start posting the video cook-along movies, videos that we have with David Robinson at his house, starting with our appetizer, our main dish, and our dessert for our virtual convention this evening. And then in between all that, we are going to be going live with Michael Canadas here at the Grovian Doll Museum. Michael, have you decided what we're going to do today? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Well, we're, we know it's going to be a blast, so get ready for a wild ride. Uh, Linda, thank you so much. Thank you, Linda. Michael, thank you so much for my hairdo. Oh, yeah, anytime. And we'll see you guys very soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.